From Oklahoma City, George Tommy, Ben McCain, Butch McCain, Robbie Robertson. This is News 4 Oklahoma. Good afternoon. Three people are in custody this afternoon. They reportedly threatened to blow up three Norman grocery stores. The FBI arrested the suspects late last night after they allegedly attempted to pick up $50,000 in extortion money. The FBI says the trio threatened three Norman IGA stores if the money was not paid. Authorities arrested Richard Dale Mangum and Robert Lester Clark and Gwendolyn well, Aileen we Powers. waited until uh, we, we made a drop, uh, dropped the package, and... Uh, when Mangum came out, uh, we just placed him under arrest, and a car had pulled up, and we placed the, uh, the female that was driving the car, placed her under arrest. Subsequent investigation uh, led us to, uh, to Clark as the third individual that was involved. In Authorities expect the suspects to be indicted tomorrow on federal extortion charges. Oklahoma City police think a prostitution operation they uncovered last week is much larger than they originally thought. A police spokesman says records show that Joseph Bonner operated his ring from coast to coast and border to border. Police arrested Bonner last week and charged him with 20 counts of pandering. Ben? The U.S. Supreme Court says it's okay to use lethal injections to execute death row inmates. The court ruled that the FDA doesn't have to test the drugs used to execute someone, nor do they have to prove that the injections produce a quick and painless death. Fires claimed two lives overnight in Oklahoma City. The first call came before 11 last night. A trailer on the city's northwest side was on fire. The blaze also damaged two vacant houses next door. When firefighters doused the blaze, they found the charred body of an elderly man inside. Fire officials say the man was a transient who had sought shelter from the rain in the abandoned trailer. The body was so badly burned that the county medical examiner will have to identify the victim by his fingerprints. Authorities are calling last night's second fire fatality a suicide. Fire officials say 34-year-old Jack Palmer died of smoke inhalation from a blaze in his home at 5911 Fox Runway. Authorities say the victim started the fire by setting fire to a pile of personal belongings. Neighbors told fire investigators the man had been distraught for several days. Oklahoma City has a new council member, but Ward 1's new voice at City Hall is a familiar one. Former Oklahoma City Police Chief I.G. Purser defeated incumbent Bob McCoy in yesterday's city council election by a nearly three-to-one margin. Purser won over 2,000 votes to McCoy's 867. In the city's other two council races, incumbents easily won re-election. In Ward 3, current officer Jack Cornett beat out uh, challenger John Sanders by over 900 votes. And in Ward 7, it was Gory James all the way. The incumbent there defeated uh, Yvonne Madden, Jacqueline Franklin, and Norma Burris. Ward 4 incumbent Pete White was unopposed, so he was automatically re-elected to another four-year term. Easy re-election bids weren't the rule in Edmond, though. Thanks to yesterday's voting, there will be runoff elections in two races. Incumbent Mayor Carl Rearman will be fighting for another term in the April 2nd runoff contest. Rearman outdrew one candidate in yesterday's race, but he didn't fare as well as another challenger, Yvonne Nichols. And Ward 4 Council incumbent Jerry Wall didn't garner enough votes to make the runoff election. The race there, April 2nd, will be between Bud Fisher and Buddy Morris. In Moore, the Ward 1 City Council race ended last night in a close race. Perry Lawson edged out Judith Stroud by just four votes. And thanks to yesterday's election, uh, spending the night in Moore will be a little costlier uh, in the future. Voters said yes to a 3% excise tax on motel receipts. The money will be used to buy more park and recreation land. And in Lawton, at 11th term for where, where Mayor Wayne Gilley, he chalked up 78% of his city's votes. There is serious talk about a legislative recess at the state capitol. House Speaker Jim Barker has confirmed that lawmakers may be going home for two weeks until they learn the results of the April 30th special election. At stake in that election is an additional $143 million. Lawmakers are unsure right now as to how much money they will have to spend without the additional funds. Barker told reporters that he may recommend a two-week vacation a week prior to the statewide election. I think that... Um we probably should have that safeguard <laughs> under the circumstances so that we do not have to rush in preparing the budget. Final decision on the recess will be announced next week. The governor and other state leaders have agreed that the break may be needed so lawmakers won't use all of their allotted legislative days. Well, you might think you're a good listener, but that may not actually be the case. Most of us don't usually hear as well as we think we do. Hi, I'm Dr. Red Duke. 
I'd like to talk to you about a real human problem, listening. To improve our listening skill. When you get through talking, I can say, what I hear you saying is, bluppity blup, bluppity blup, is that right? I can ask you, I can check it out with you. Uh, some other ways are to listen for the feelings, like to listen with your eyes. For example, if you, if you tell me, uh, if I asked you, how's it going? And you said, oh, pretty good. See, if I just listened to the words, the content, if you saw those words written out in a book, you wouldn't get it. That what it, it you don't sound pretty good at all. Nearest living room. A good listener must have the attitude that there's always something important to be learned in the listening process. Next time, we'll talk about some other listening skills. I'm Dr. Red Deal. The stock market scored its biggest gain in more than a month yesterday with the last minute rally. The Dow Jones closed up about 21 and a half points. Let's see how things look today. Well, the first few hours of spring in Oklahoma have been soggy ones for us residents, or we residents here in Oklahoma City. A series of thunderstorms dumped rain all across the state and made driving a bit hazardous this morning. Now, you're about to take a look at Lakeshore Drive and Wilshire Boulevard. Nearby Kids Lake was spilled to capacity and flooded the road. The water forced traffic to slow and was a problem all during the rush hour. There were reports of minor flooding on Interstate 40 and across the city motorists were taking their time getting to work. All of this flooding, by the way, is prompting a school to close its doors early. Falls, Lakeview School, and Norman will close between 1 and 1.30. Gents. Spring has sprung, and it's come in with a splash, hasn't it? Yes. Uh, no uh, flash flood watches or warnings out right now. Earlier, there was uh, a watch posted for southeastern Oklahoma. Also, some warnings posted for uh, Cleveland and Pottawatomie County. No longer in effect. Most of all the heavy rain is over with. Do you like the rain? Not particularly. Not I don't particularly. I hate it. Okay, I well, it. you guys will see some sunshine tomorrow then. Great. Okay, there are folks out there that like the rain, particularly the wheat farmers, all right? 49 degrees. Humidity is 93%. The pressure is 29.82 and falling. Light rain showers, northeast winds blowing in here 16 to 26 miles per hour at times. Most of the noontime temperatures are in the 50s, with one exception. That's 49 from Gage and Woodward. 50 here in the city, 51 from Ponca City and Blackwell. They still have a few scattered showers up there. We'll show you radar in a minute. 55 in from Ardmore. One of my favorite little towns, Jimmy Rowan's, uh, Rowland's hometown, as a matter of fact. 52 from Shawnee and Pottawatomie County took its name from the Shawnee Indian tribe, you might guess. 52 degrees, northeasterly winds blowing all around the state at the rate of 15 to 25 miles per hour. Afternoon highs, well, we won't warm up from what we are really that much. Uh, we're holding on to 50 right now, and we're liable to see 53 degrees, so maybe three whopping degrees for an afternoon high uh, from what we are standing right now. Some sunshine up here in, the, uh, in the, say, Kansas and Nebraska. They're liable to see some 60s down to the south, 60s and 70s. Particularly the 70s will hug the coast of Texas and Louisiana later on today on the surface. Here's a low pressure that's pretty strong that's really brought copious amounts of moisture up uh, from the Gulf and dispersing it throughout uh, much of East Texas and, of course, Oklahoma. And, uh, most of all of our heavy rain is over with, we think. The heaviest rain will fall in Arkansas and Louisiana later on today. Flash flood watches will be out for those two states, we think. Cooler air is beginning to move in just a little bit, but we'll start to warm up tomorrow as we see a little bit of sunshine, I think. Here's a satellite photograph taken earlier this morning, and it shows all that moisture coming up across Texas, and the low is right back here. You can kind of see the spiraling motion here. That low has since moved just along the Red River Valley now, and will continue moving on off to the east. It's moving rather rapidly, so once again, we think we're through with most all of the uh, heavy rain. We're just going to see showers throughout today and tonight, and uh, slowly tonight they'll start to end from the west. Now, right now, a radar that uh, we're coming, our radar site is right outside of Noble, Oklahoma. So it's shooting uh, this way, and, and it shows that most of uh, the showers are particularly in the central sections as well as north central sections of Oklahoma, south of Ponca City, around Perry and Enid and uh, even back toward Fairview, most all this activity is moving northward now 
at about 15 miles per hour. So let's put our map into motion and see what we can expect for the nation the next 24 to 36 hours. Scattered showers, pretty light across most all of Oklahoma. And then as the evening and tomorrow progresses, we'll start to see most all of the heavy thunderstorm activity be in the southeastern part of the country. And we'll watch another frontal system here. It's liable to move in toward the, uh, say, particularly on Saturday and Sunday over the weekend. I'd hate to break that to you, but that's what it looks like. This morning's low temperature here in Oklahoma City was 51 degrees. We've since lowered to uh, uh, 49 since then. Temperatures will be fluctuating just around that 50 degree mark the next several hours. 66 yesterday afternoon's high. Normal 38 and 62. Records are 12 and 92. Here in our official coffee can at Channel 4, a little more than two inches of rain out at the weather service. They've had, uh, that, that's kind of switched there. They've had uh, about two and one third of an inch out at the weather service. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. Cool and windy this afternoon with occasional showers. We're through with all the heavy rain, we think. Later on tonight, it'll be cool with rain gradually ending from the west to the east. North winds at 10 to 20. And tomorrow, there's hope for a little sunshine for the second day of spring. Decreasing cloudiness and warmer, north winds at 10 to 20. Afternoon highs today will stay in the 50s with a cloudy sky and somewhat dreary, dismal weather. 53 for a high today and 40 for tomorrow morning's low temperature. A little more than two inches here in Oklahoma City. Uh, the heaviest amount of rain that I've received here was Marlow, uh, north of Duncan. They've had almost four inches of rain down there. All right. Thank you, Butch. Tomorrow on News 4 Oklahoma, early in the morning, Mark Mary will be here to tell about uh, the Memorial Square 8 Theater. Charlotte Noble and Dr. Don Mitchell from Southwestern Oklahoma State University in Weatherford and Joe McIntosh of KEBC will serve up the music connection. Let's take a look now at the agricultural markets at the Oklahoma National Stockyards. 2,500 head of cattle, 500 hogs. Slaughter cow, steady, $34.50 to $44 per hundred weight. Slaughter bull steady to week, $48 to $54. Stockers and feeders steady, choice steers $55 to $69. Choice heifers $52 to $62. Steer calves $60 to $82. Heifer calves $54 to $65. Bears and gilts $1 to $1.50 higher, $42.75 to $43.20. Sows $1 to $2 lower, $38 to $46.50. Feeder pigs too few to test. Cattle futures market fat cattle April down 62 cents at 61.80. Feeder cattle April down 30 cents at 67.55. Wheat Kansas City May down a penny at 3.46. Wheat Chicago May down 2 cents at 3.44. Corn Chicago May unchanged at 2.76. Soybean Chicago May down 2 cents at 6.06. Gold April down 5.80 at $323. Silver March down 12 cents at 6.40. George? Thank you, Ben. Well, spring is here, and that means it's time for the circus. The Shriner Circus is coming into town. In fact, it starts tomorrow. And joining us this afternoon is Phil Waters with the Shriners. And Phil, could you tell us a little bit about the, the circus this year? Well, first of all, it's an all-new show. Uh, we have 23 completely new acts. Uh, we have a 13-tiger uh, uh, act. It's a numbering 13 with a, uh, a large lion. And these are all Bengal tigers, and uh, they, they don't get along too well together, <laughs> but uh, uh, John Cox, who is the trainer, does manage to put them through their paces. Where is it going to be? Uh... It's going to be at the State Fairgrounds Arena. Uh, the show starts tomorrow night at 7.30. Uh, Friday morning we have a special senior citizen show that we're really excited about. We've done this for the last several years. Uh, it's a free show and starts at 10 o'clock in the morning. And of course this is available to all senior citizens from all over the state and mm -hmm. we do usually have a big big crowd so we look forward to that of course uh, friday evening we'll have a 7 30 p.m performance with a two o'clock matinee on saturday and a 7 30 p.m show saturday evening with uh, sunday at two and then the last show will be 6 30 sunday evening and of course the, with the exception of the one for the senior citizens all the proceeds from the circus go to help the many fine uh, philanthropic <coughs> efforts of the shriners this is one of the uh, ways we raise uh, funds to help support our 23 Shriners Hospital. Okay, it sounds like it's going to be a great time for all. Now back to a couple of guys who have a three-ring circus every morning at 6 a.m. <laughs> George, you've watched before. <laughs> you son of a gun. Today in sports, spring uh, presents a familiar problem to area college baseball coaches. And Bob Berry Jr. will have highlights of a tennis surprise from Tuesday night. The sports is next. Play ball. 
play ball, ready to go in the spring. Right. However, springtime means rain in this state, doesn't it? And uh, sure enough, rain has hampered the college baseball schedule again on this first day of the 1985 spring season. Baseball in Stillwater today was expected to be Oklahoma State's game against Wichita State, but it has been washed out for today. Both clubs are ranked in the top 20, but they'll have to make up the rain out as part of a doubleheader later on this year. No uh, official date has been set. OSU will play Dallas Baptist tomorrow, and a doubleheader scheduled to start at 1 o'clock. Oklahoma, meantime, is 17-1 and one on the year after the Sooners blistered, blistered OCU 7-1 to one yesterday, so OU will host North Texas State in a doubleheader tomorrow at 1 o'clock in Norman. Well, News 4's Robbie Robertson and Robert Allen left for Norman or for Dallas today through Norman to cover Oklahoma's basketball game with Louisiana Tech tomorrow afternoon in the NCAA Midwest Regional Semifinals. We'll have more from Dallas on News 4 at 5 and 5.30. Kansas outstanding freshman Danny Manning has been named first team all-freshman by the writers of the Associated Press. The 6'11 Manning averaged over 14.5 points per game and 6.5 rebounds. Joining Manning on the youngsters first team, David Rivers out of Notre Dame John Williams of LSU, Cedric Henderson of Georgia, and Gary Grant from Michigan. NIT results from last night. UCLA ended Nebraska's season. Huskers finished at 16 and 14. Indiana rolls past Richmond. Virginia over St. Joe's of Pennsylvania. Marquette down Cincinnati. And Fresno State beat New Mexico. Tonight's game's just three. South Florida at Louisville. Southwest Louisiana at Tennessee. And it will be Tennessee Chattanooga at Lamar. And here's a report on an exciting NBA game from last night. Well, actually, not NBA. That was tennis. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Uh, it's supposed to be Bulls and the Rockets. We'll tell you that Houston beat uh, Chicago 106 to 100. Look at highlights some other time. Now let's talk about football first. Los Angeles Rams record-setting running back Eric Dickerson made some folks happy yesterday. Dickerson presented each of his offensive linemen with diamond rings. Dickerson set an NFL season single-season rushing record with 2,105 yards last year. At the same presentation, one of the Rams linemen said that all of the blockers will donate one dollar to the starving children in Africa next year for each yard Dickerson gains. That'll probably be about ten thousand dollars. There was a shocking upset, as you saw just a second ago, a little glimpse of in tennis last night. Kathy Jordan in the near court beat Chris Everett Lloyd 6-2, 1-6, in the first round of the Virginia Slims of New York City. Let's watch and listen to Match Point. Ow! It's out! When we played in Dallas, she was running me all over the court and I had to do something different. So I was just trying to keep the ball in play and be real steady and that's what basically was the whole match for me. Kathy Jordan beat Chris Everett Lloyd about a year ago, so a second win within two years. And the top seed in that tournament is Martina Navratilova. Hannah Manlikova also won last night. Again, reports on the Sooners basketball team in Dallas on the Hour of News today at 5 o'clock. Getting ready for Louisiana Tech, the Bulldogs. Tough game coming up. You bet. Back after this. Well, the first day of spring arrives awfully soggy. It arrived ooh, about 14 minutes after 10 o'clock. You missed it? You... you you should have celebrated and opened your umbrella or something. 53 for an afternoon high today. Showers in the forecast. Tomorrow we'll see a little glimpse of the sun, I think. Decreasing cloudiness. Warmer temperatures, 58, 60 for Friday. Saturday, rain and thunderstorms back in the forecast in a high of 62 and 64 degrees. It looks like that next system could come in as early as Friday, but right now we've got it on the weekend. I would personally like to move it. All right, thank you, Butch. Little Jimmy Rowland of Shawnee is gaining national attention as a hero. Over the weekend, a man broke into the home and threatened Jimmy's mother with a knife. Six-year-old Jimmy went to get a rifle and pointed it at the intruder. Jimmy told the man, let my mommy go. With that, he cocked the gun, scared the intruder off, even though the gun wasn't loaded. The gun was not loaded. And, uh, and then he went and he said, I've got a knife and I can get you all. And then I, I go... I said, you better let my mommy go or I'm going to shoot. And then she managed to get out, get behind him and go. And then we all took off running. Six-year-old <laughs> Jimmy Rowland. He appeared on the Today Show this morning. I understand he'll be on Nightly News. And he also appeared on our program this morning. Uh, the Marines need a few, few good young men, and he's one of them. I promise o you that. Oklahoma's answer is Charles Bronson. There you go. <laughs> March 5 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great afternoon. News for Oklahoma is a presentation of KTVY, Oklahoma's most watched news channel.